Okay, so I just announced on my page and probably should have announced for the Fit Republic first, um, but I am working with somebody for some marketing stuff, some social media stuff. She's gonna make a couple cover photos for me, super exciting. Um, but we were talking about like a tagline for the Fit Republic team and she was asking if we had one and we do not have one. Um, and just as we're talking, um, my whole sort of life theme right now is live out loud. And so I am in love with that and I'm really doing my best to, to like live that day by day right now. So the Fit Republic will adopt the tagline of live out loud loud and we're actually going to have a logo and all of that great stuff too so you guys will start seeing that like plastered all over the place and i'm super excited um okay so we need to talk a little bit about new stuff before we get into um the social media awesomeness um, that Lindsay has prepared. So I'm not sure if you guys heard on the national wake up call, but there are some new things coming up uh, in terms of challenge packs. So I will explain them to you. I'm just looking for the post. Um, really quick. I probably should have done this before. I'm super, super excited about the changes coming out. It just sort of, it streamlines everything um, for everybody. Where is it now? Oh, on that note, actually, before we go there. Did you guys, um, we had the question about whether or not the, when somebody buys uh, the all access challenge pack, if they want to do the shift shop, um, about those colored rubber markers that we have, they can be purchased as an extra and there is commission and volume attached to both, which makes me very happy. Um, okay. Oh, and also, I'm sure you all know, but the challenge pack, um, the all access challenge pack is still on sale until August 31st. Dang it, where is that post? Does anybody else, can anybody else find that post perhaps in the Fit Republic that changes to the challenge packs? Okay, so firstly, I'll just talk about the all access one first. The, they have, changed all access and they're making the instead of having the regular beach body on demand and then the all access beach body on demand they they're now making on demand all access for everybody so this just streamlines our offering um they're also reducing the uh, trial to 14 days instead of 30 days. This makes me really, really happy um, because people can actually complete an entire program in 30 days for free. And then what a lot of people were doing was just signing up for free again with a different email address. And most people have more than one email address. And I mean, really, they could just sign up with different email addresses all the time and do all of our programs, right? So um, the free trial has been reduced to 14 days and I think that is super, super awesome. Um, oh, thank you, Lindsay. Okay, um, there was something else and I should have, I should have totally brought it up before, but I didn't. There's some other, there are some other uh, new things happening um, in terms of the performance line and the performance line being available with challenge packs that it hasn't been available with. So I will find that for you after. Okay, so um, next in team business and news, um, we are gonna do a seven day uh, push to Emerald group for you and for your coaches. So if um, the next step for you in your business is to hit Emerald, um, 
I will be creating a group and I will be posting this group next week in the Fit Re Republic. Lisa is all in. Awesome. Um, and this is for everybody, anybody and everybody on the team. Um, I'm going to be doing some fun prizes and all of that stuff in there. Um, but the goal for this group is not just for me to tell you what to do. It's also for the team to have a conversation and talk with each other about your invites and all of that kind of thing. So um, I'm introducing a new format for the Push to Emerald that we haven't done before um, that is more interactive and to promote the interactivity. Is that a word? Totally a word. Um, I'm going to be doing some prizes and fun stuff like that. So watch out for that. It will be posted in the Fit Republic group next week. If if you or your personally sponsored coaches need this group, um, then make sure that you request to join. If you have personally sponsored coaches who request to join this push to Emerald group, then I expect you to join the group as well. If you already are an Emerald coach, uh, but you're not, you're like, you're not really sponsoring that well, you want to grow your team, you're ready to grow your team, this push to Emerald group is going to be good for you as well. So I highly recommend that anybody who wants to focus on growing their team and isn't at the point of diamond yet, this would be a really, really great group for you to get in on. Um, and what I'm expecting in this group is a really positive energy. Um, and I know that we can super bring it <laughs> with that positive energy. Um, just let me look at a calendar real quick for when I was gonna have that group start. Um, that group will start on May 29th, FYI. Okay. Um, on to Summit. Uh, for those of you who haven't made a decision yet, we've got seven weeks left. I can't even recommend it enough. If you can make it, if there's any way you can make it, um, I'm just going to say our team is a collection of the most fun people in the world. It's just true. Like, I, I'm not even sorry for bragging. Um, and we're going to have such an amazing time. I would love to see, I don't even know how many people we have coming. Does anybody know how many people are in the summit, like the Fit Republic Summit group at all? I'm curious to know how many people we have coming. Um, I would love to have 100 people out at Summit. That, that's like my dream. That would be the best. Um, okay, so that is it for team crap. I am super excited because we have the Lindsay Hill um, talking to us today about social media strategy. And the reason that I'm super excited to have Lindsay chat with us is because like, I think she doesn't even realize how good at social media she actually is. Like, I know, you know, Lindsay, that you're good at social media, but I don't think you realize how good you are. Sometimes there's like a portion of this business that just comes really easily to you. That was not me with social media, right? And so for Lindsay, this is something that sort of came naturally to her. And so if she can teach us what she's doing and those things that she just kind of like, it was intuitive for her to do, um, we can all get better together. Um, and like Karina, for example, she was just really good right from day one at talking to people, like building relationships, making new connections with people, just so easy for her. That also wasn't easy for me. What was easy for me? Dang it. I think inviting was easy. At first, inviting to challenge groups was really easy for me, whereas making new connections was, was hard. Um, but in any case, Lindsay, right out the gate, she started seeing success in her business. She started hitting success club uh, right away in her business. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that she was just like a believer. She'd gotten great results. Um, and last year, this is big, Lindsay Hill actually is the first premier coach on the Fit Republic team ever, 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 ever. Um, so I am encouraging you guys to take notes and really like let it sink in. What she says, no matter how you feel about it, just do all the things. That's it. Do all the things. 
Lindsay, take it away, my girl. Thank you. Okay, guys, so I am super excited to talk to you guys tonight. When Rosa asked me to talk about it, I even said to her, I'm like, I don't know how to teach it because like she said, it is something that I was just really comfortable doing from the beginning. I wasn't into health and fitness before. Um, I did have a blog. My son had allergies. I posted pictures about my kids, but I had nothing to do with health and fitness. So I started, I started my first challenge group and joined as a coach right away. And I just started posting because Allie and Rosa told, told us to post. So I just started posting and I've always treated my Facebook like a blog. I literally share my life. Everything I do throughout the day, I am not a post planner. Some people do great with it. Some people do great with lists. I kind of fly by the seat of my pants and just post my life. <laughs> the good, the bad, the ugly. So you need to treat your, I have a ton of notes, so hopefully I can get through them all. You need to treat your Facebook like a business, like right from day one. Yeah. And you need to be confident. I know it can be nerve wracking and it can be scary to post, but we're not talking to people in person. Like we are sitting behind a computer screen. You can write out the thing and if you don't like it, you can erase it. You, Jackson, <laughs> you, yeah. So speak with confidence because people are attracted to confidence. People are more influenced by confidence. So don't be scared to be bold when you post. And read it through. When you write your post, sit back and look at it and read it and then go, and what? Like yesterday, I did a post saying, I did a fun fact about my tattoos. I posted it and then I was like, oh, I'm like, it's missing something. There's no, like, why would I post this for anybody? So I added a question at the very end. I went back, I edited my post and I said, how many tattoos do you have? I have almost 100 comments on that post. Whereas if I didn't put that one little line, I probably wouldn't have had any engagement. So when I do a post, I write it out and then I look at it and I sit back and I say, and what? Why would I post this for anybody that's following me, right? And then think about like, what is somebody gonna get out of it? Yeah, sometimes they're just like my coffee in the morning and it says Sunday vibes with a peace sign. But I always make sure then later in the day that you post something that gives something to people. Yes. Um, so right from the back, you're the CEO of your own business and you need to show up every single day. And I think that really is what started my success in the business is that I literally posted, I even think I was posting five times a day when I started every single day. I did not miss a day. <laughs> I showed up every day. I posted, I posted a sweaty selfie every single day and I still, I didn't this week cause I was doing a cleanse. But I still do. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, people are going to get sick with my sweaty selfies. I still use my Facebook page as a way to hold myself accountable, right? Like we're, we, we have a fitness business, so I don't get away from that because I have had coaches that get away from it and then they lose their traction, right? You still need to share it, but you need to share all the other things in your lives too. Um, if you don't show up, you don't get paid and you don't help anybody. You don't inspire anyone if you don't show up. And that's what we're all here to do. So you need to show up every day. I talked to, I have a message shared with some of my new coaches and one of them was having a, a flunk today. And she's like, oh, I just don't have the motivation. There's going to be days like that. I told, pop on Pinterest, get a recipe and post it on your page. Like just do something, give something. It takes two seconds. And I'm going to talk about that a little later. But just make sure you're always giving value. And we have, social media is free. Like we have the world at our fingertips to build a business and we don't need to pay for it. Literally, you can connect with anybody. So we really, really need to take advantage of it. Um, and you need to build your credibility by posting and showing up and showing people that you're in it. So I, when I started, I was, and I still am, product of the product. Yes, I've had my ups and downs and I've shared them. I've gained weight, I've lost weight. But I, when I first started as coach, like there was, you try, you could put donuts in front of me and I was not going to eat them. Like I was so determined to get wicked results because I knew that would drive my business. And you need to have that mindset. Like you are worth it, right? To get these results. You owe it to yourself and you can totally do it. Um, 
So one thing that I, I think my team, I see some of my team on here, so they might be familiar with some of the stuff I talk about because we did a team call not too long ago about this. Um, but I've been diving into business development a lot. So I obviously I started with my fitness, which obviously led me to personal development, and I started that right away, which has led me into doing some business development. So I go on to the podcast app and I search Facebook or I search like the hot thing right now is live video. So I search it and I look for a podcast that talks about it and I listen to it on my drive in and I learn about the things that are happening in Facebook, right? Like it's, it's our tool and there's some things I'm going to talk about tonight that you may not have known, which hopefully this will help you with your posting. So there are three things that Facebook looks at when they're looking at your post to determine where it goes in the newsfeed. So we always say you need to post three to five times a day at different times of the day because you're going to reach, reach different people, right? If you do three morning posts, maybe all the people are working. You're not going to catch anybody in the evening. But there are things that you can do every day with your Facebook to make sure your posts get more visible, that they get more seen. I have people that follow my fitness page and they don't, they may never see a post. Facebook is weird like that, right? So there are three things that they measure or they look at. Number one is affinity. Number two is weight. And number three is time. And I'm going to go through each one. So affinity is how much your content is seen. So how much is it popping up in the news feed? It doesn't just pop up once and then people scroll away and then it's done for the day. If you, and Facebook measures this. So we always say to do good karma during our power hour and comment on other people's pictures. Facebook knows if you're not participating in the game, they don't put a lot of affinity on your posts. So if you are not sharing the love and commenting on other people's posts and giving them whatever it is, good vibes, then they're going to say, well, why am I going to share her post more? Because she's not doing anything on Facebook. Okay. So super important in your power hour. Um, number two is the weight. So Facebook puts a weight on your post. And the most popular, which I'm going to talk a lot about tonight, the most popular is live video. Like they say, all the podcasts I listen to say it's the gateway drug to building a connection, right? People crave reality. They crave reality now. So live video gets weighted the most. So if you do a live video, it is going to get the most views. It's going to show up in the news feed the most. The next is a recorded video. Then it goes photos. And then it goes just text, which please really rare, rare occasion, just post text. Don't, don't try to do that often. Um, so that is how it's weighted. So I know I challenged my team to go live once a day on their page. I'm in Facebook jail right now, so I can't do any videos, but <laughs> you, um, you should really try to do that. And the last one is time. And I never knew this about Facebook, but Facebook actually looks at how fast you respond to comments on your posts. Something that I learned. So they actually, I'm not saying you need to like the second someone comments, don't pick up your phone and, and respond. But if you're waiting a couple days to respond to comments, Facebook knows that. And they look at that to determine where you are in the newsfeed. Um, the other thing I wanted to say too, one second, where is it here? Oh, it, which I never ever knew. But when you are scrolling your newsfeed, if you stop on a video, maybe you don't even click the video, you just stop and look at it, Facebook knows, and they are going to put more of that content in your newsfeed because you stopped and looked at it. So your pictures need to be clear. Your, your text is important, but your pictures are the reason why people will stop in their newsfeed, right? So if I am taking a picture of my food, you better believe it is by a window in my house, wherever the sun is. It could be four rooms away from the kitchen table, but that is where I take my food picture. And I, I mean, anything. It has to be, I try to find natural light. If I can't, obviously, if it's dark, it may do. 
Um, but your pictures really need to be scroll stopping. And if you do a video, which hopefully we all do, you need to put captions on your videos. And the reason being is because people are busy. People could be taking the bus. They could be in a work meeting, checking their phone, scrolling the Facebook feed. They don't even need to click on your video. They'll be able to see the whole video and what it's about and what you're saying. And because they stopped on your video, Facebook is going to put your stuff in their newsfeed more. Can you so, tell me about how to caption a video, Lindsay? Yeah. So you go into, um, I, can, I can do a quick screenshot if you want. Do it. Okay. One sec here. Screen share. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Your cover what? photo oh, is life. Okay. So you click videos. Oh, we don't need this up. You're going to click video library. Wait for it, guys. Also, you can go live from your desktop. You don't need to do it from your phone anymore. You just click the live button here. Um, so, for example, if I go down, or oh, whatever, we'll just pick whatever works. Oh, I think I remember pretty yeah. I already have captions on this one. Um, okay, so hit edit. Captions. And then all you have to do is hit generate and it will generate all the captions on your video. And you just have to go through and I delete the like ums and ahs because it will write all of those in. So when I hit generate, it loads the caption and puts all of my Hey, Facebook, I'm just getting ready actually to go to my girlfriend's house. So it puts it all in, but you need to spell check it because, you know, sometimes it can be sketchy. And that's it. And then you have captions on your video. So it takes literally two seconds and it's something that you should do. Um, what else? Okay. I'm getting organized here. I got off my track a little bit. Sorry. Um, that's okay. So yeah, guys, go on podcasts. Honestly, they are free. I've been listening to podcasts like crazy. Um, I can share some of the ones in Fit Republic that I've been listening to that you can tune into. Um, but there's, it's an, a, there's an abundance of information there. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is maybe you're trying to figure out like what, what to post, right? So I want you to think about when you are scrolling your newsfeed, what do you stop for? So what makes you stop in your newsfeed? And if you were to follow someone's page, why would you follow it? I know I would follow a page for recipes. I love cooking. Um, anything to do really with recipes and nutrition. And that's my jam. I love to post about recipes and everything and meals and whatever. So think about what makes you stop in your newsfeed. What why you would follow someone's page and that's probably what you should be posting about because what you post about is what going what's going to attract people that are like you um also something that i've been doing a little different lately is instead of saying oh if i get 50 likes on this post i'll share the recipe i've been giving it all so i post a picture of my food i give the entire recipe because people are more likely to share the post when you give it all in your text, the exact recipe, how to cook it, everything, people hit the share button because they want to save it. They want to have it on their walls. Maybe they want to tag somebody in it. So sometimes I'll get like seven shares to a recipe because I've given it all. Instead of holding back and asking them to do something in order to get it, I just give. So that has worked really good for me too. Um, okay. If you haven't done the avatar exercise in the Fit Republic training that I put together, you need to do it, right? You can't just post to everyone. And I know in the beginning, maybe, and even now, maybe that's what you're doing, but if you try to put up a post and not know who your target market is, which it's hard to nail down, it's hard to figure that out. But when I do a post, I imagine that I'm just speaking to one person. I'm not trying to speak to everybody. 
I even put, you will see in the Fit for Public training, I have a picture of what my avatar looks like, like her face is on there. And when I do a post, I talk to her. It's like sometimes I start my post with a question to her. What would she like? She's a mom. I'm going to share a mom hack. Or I'm going to ask a struggle. And people love to give their opinions about struggles or when something's not working. So think of your avatar. Do the exercise if you have not done it. If you are having trouble still with your posting, go back and do the exercise. Maybe you didn't answer it right. Okay, so that should be definitely on the top of your to-do list if you haven't done it already. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about personal page and like page. So I will say the longer you use a personal page in the business, the harder it's going to be for you to transition to a like page. That's what I think. I agree. I agree. You are going to get used to the engagement on your personal page, right? Compared to your like page. But what, what, what you need to realize is you can add friends and friends and friends and friends on your Facebook page. And that's great. They've accepted your request. But they are not all your people. The people. So if I have, for example, I have 1,500 friends on my personal page. Only 400 of those 1,500 like my fitness page. And those 400 are my people. They chose to like my personal, my fitness page for a reason because they are similar to me. They like the content that I have to share. And that's all that matters. I have more followers than 400, but that is what is from my personal page, right? So yes, I may get more engagement on my personal page when I post, but those people didn't choose to like my, my like page. And that really is my core market, right? So you need to commit to your like page and you need to post there every day, every day. If your engagement is a little lower, that's okay. It's quality people that are following your page instead of all these people that you've added as friends that you don't even know yet, right? So don't get discouraged. You just have to keep focusing on building it. And the way more people are going to see it is if you do live video, right? Do live video with content. And I'm going to talk about that. The other reason to use your Facebook page too is for the analytics. So I was listening to a podcast and the guy said, you don't get in a car and drive down the road without any direction, like without knowing where you're going. And the difference between using a personal page and a Facebook page is you can go onto your Facebook page and see when the most people are on your page, looking at your posts, what time should you post your call to action? What time are the, mine is usually like eight to 9 PM. Most of the, my moms have put down their kids and they're scrolling their Facebook. Um, it will tell you the age category of your target market, all the people that are following your page. So instead of getting in the car and driving with their directions, you have a page that tells you when to post a call to action, when to post a, a post that asks a question, because you know, most of your followers on your page are on at that time. Um, the other thing too, I wanted to say, if you are the person that is posting all of your fitness stuff on your like page, on your fitness page, and you're like, I'm just going to leave my personal page for my family and friends. I'm just going to post pictures of my kids over there. And I'm just going to leave my personal page like that. Nobody is going to go to your fitness page because they think you're going to sell to them. Okay. Because if you were doing that, <laughs> If you use your personal page for friends and family and like la di da going for a stroll in the park and you only use your fitness page for beach body and fitness, nobody's going to go over there because everybody's going to think that you're going to try to sell them something from beach body, right? You need to share your life on your fitness page. My kids like, and you will find the one, the, reach, the posts that get the most reach are the ones about your family or your regular life, right? And that's still, that doesn't mean you don't post your fitness posts and all that, but it's, it's engaging. People like to see reality, right? So you need to combine the two on your fitness page. You can't separate them. Um, I have so many notes. 
I'm writing so many notes. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing to note about your like page is you need to have your about section complete because if you don't, Facebook doesn't score your pages high, doesn't see it as done. So make sure you have an about page or an about section filled out. Also, please, 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 from your personal page, put where you work. Don't put Beachbody. Okay, don't put Beachbody Coach. Put the name, the link to your fitness page because that is a way, an easy way to get your warm market of new contacts and stuff over to your personal or to your fitness page. You need to have a connection there, right? Because you're probably growing your network on your personal page, leading them to your fitness page. And this is a given. Your picture needs to be you. It's a given. You need to be smiling and friendly. Actually, I don't think I'm smiling in mine, but um, I look like a mom that really wants coffee. And that's kind of who I am. So just make sure it's you, it's clear, it's not you and a bunch of friends, and they won't be able to know who you are. That's super, super important. No and cats, no dogs. No, no, just just you. Just the you. Um, one thing that I told my team to try doing was, so... I would make a goal for all of you to post something of value every single day. Every single, that value could, could be something motivational. It could be a recipe, ideally with a picture of your own food would be best. Um, it could be a life hack. So I know Angie Belmar has, she's always talked about it in her social media training for my five. So what are the five things that make you, you, right? So for me, it's fitness, food, I'm a mom, a wife, I love decorating, I love coffee. Those are pretty much the five things you will see on my page. Um, I don't post about decorating all the time, but I, when I do, the reach is insane because my followers know that I like to decorate and they know that's a passion of mine. So if you think of your my five, your value posts can be any of those five, right? So maybe I post a decorating hack or a painting hack or something like that. It does not need to be fitness related. And those hacks will get shared, right? Because you're not selling anything. You're just helping. So what I suggested my team is at the beginning of each week, sit down with the calendar and just for the five days, for the Monday to Friday, write what your value post is going to be every day. Right? So maybe Monday is something motivational. Maybe Tuesday is Tasty Tuesday. You post a recipe every day. Wednesday could be a mini workout or something. Thursday could be a life hack or a mom hack or something to pack in your kid's lunch. Like literally, it could be, it could be anything. But as long as you're giving value every single day, you're giving your followers a reason to come to your page. And I think too, like just for those of you who are struggling with content and you're like, ah, like I have no idea, a really, really easy way to do this is like Lindsay said, have your five things that you post about. And if Monday is your day to talk about motivation or whatever, and you're a mom, for example, um, you can search on Pinterest tips for mom motivation. And on Pinterest, you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. Pick one and then relate it back to your life. Make sure that it's personal and that it's you. Take that tip and relate it back to your life. So have your five things. And if you're sitting down to do your, you know, on the weekend to do your Monday to Friday value post, you can use Pinterest as a search engine and you can always make it personal by taking your favorite tip for that getting a good picture to go with it and then just relating it back to how that's going to help you or how that has helped you, et cetera. For sure. And honestly, the, the value is like, we all have crappy weeks. We all have good weeks. Last week, the reach on my page was really, really crappy. This week I focused so much on giving yesterday. I think every single one of my posts gave something and my reach is like, it's insane. Right. So if you focus on giving, you will see it, it builds trust Like you are giving stuff for free. And even if it's minute, it's still worth it. Um, for those of you guys using Instagram, I don't post on it a lot. If you're a new coach, please 
stick to Facebook. Don't venture over there yet. But if you are using Instagram, make sure in your bio you have a link to your fitness page. And then when you do post a value post, if you share a recipe on your fitness page, you can share that picture on your Instagram and say, um, just shared an awesome recipe, super excited, kid-friendly for the recipe, link in bio or whatever. You're sending people to your fitness page and don't ever share from Instagram to Facebook because Facebook sees it as an outside source and they will not give it much reach. So you need to post on Instagram and you need to post separately on Facebook. If you're not on Instagram, ignore that whole message. Um, the other thing you can do that I did the other day, share a viral video. Like if there is a freaking hilarious video and you want to share it on a Friday, like there's two moms, I think they do mom truth Fridays or whatever. I share that and all the time I get wicked reach. I shared the video of uh, the mom and the baby the other day that was going around on the internet. I had seven shares on it and the reach is insane. So maybe like twice a week you share a viral video and you, whatever, if you think it's funny, if you like it, then your followers are going to like it too, right? Um, yes, yeah, the, it's just, and it's easy. It's an easy post. So when you are having a brain dead day, because we all have them, just look for a viral video that would speak to your people. So, and post it. Yourself. Um, so you, we're, nobody's perfect, right? You all have to share your faults. You share your struggles. Um, I have cried on my Facebook page live from Summit. True story. Um, <laughs> Um, so you just really have to be real and you have to be you. And if you have something negative to post about, it's okay to post it, but you need to put a positive spin on it because people are attracted to positivity. So if you post and say like, oh, I haven't worked out in three days, I feel like crap or something. Like, great. That's what... Great post. You need to say like, I haven't worked out in three days. I'm a little down on myself, but I've got my challenge group here to kick me in the butt. And just, you have to put a positive spin on everything. If you post negative, then you're going to attract negative. Maybe that's your jam, but I prefer to attract positive people. So everything really needs to have a slight positive spin on it. Um, you can also ask your people what they want. Like, I know I did a poll once um, asking them what they wanted to see more of. And I said, is it meal plan? Is it personal development? Is it a mini workouts? Um, I can't remember what the other one was. And everybody wanted meal plan stuff, which is funny because that's what I love to do. I love to cook. My followers all want nutrition and meal plan stuff. So I know now that that's what I should post more about. So don't, like, don't be afraid to ask them and ask them live, right? Do a live video and ask your followers what they want to see. I don't care if you have 100 people on your page or you have 600 people. Go live. Um, also, and whatever your strength is, own it and like post about it all the time. You're going to be confident with that. If you don't know what that is, do some personal development. You'll figure it out. Like Karina is so good with words and talking like she said, like Rosa said, and that's her strength and she's freaking amazing at it. But just if you find what your strength is, like I know Jillian's on this call and Jillian's is totally meal planning and nutrition and that's what she talks about the most on her page. So own your strength and share it all the time. Um, so I'm challenging you guys, try to go live every single day if you're not in Facebook jail. Um, I know it's scary. It doesn't need to be perfect. And I told my team this, it does not need to be perfect. If I'm sitting here talking to you guys and I drop my pen, you're not going to look at me and be like, oh, she messed up, right? Like it's a lot, you're a real person sitting and having a conversation with the people that you follow, that follow you. So there is no need to like do it without makeup one day. Like it doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to be real and you need to be you. And you need to not start your live video by saying, Oh, I'm just going to wait for somebody to hop on. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait a sec. Because not one person that hops onto your live video is going to catch the beginning. The only people that see the beginning of your live video are the people that are scrolling their news feeds 
and they're going to stop at your video and they're going to be watching and you're going to be like, just going to wait, see if anybody hops on. And you wait and they're going to be like, screw this, like I'm scrolling by. So you just need to start, jump right into your live video and just start talking. Um, one tip that I listened to the other day is they say, give your absolute best tip first. So if you're doing five meal planning tips in a live video, give your best one first, because then people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to stick around for this, right? So give your ton of value right in the beginning of your live video. Um, ask a question within the first 20 seconds of your live video. Ask where people live. Ask them something super simple so they will comment on your video because that boosts engagement and it will get your video seen more. Um, where do they live? Um, I don't know, Any, anything, just ask them anything. You can plan that question before you start your video um, or just comment hi when you hop on, right? And Victoria had told me in the training she had at Super Saturday, I think it was you, Victoria, always try to have the last comment on every single post. Right. So don't let anybody have the last comment on the post because that means you didn't engage with them. So always try to have the last comment on all of your posts. And that way you're up to date. Um, they are okay, I was saying like people crave reality. So you're probably wondering, like, what do I post? Like, if I'm supposed to go live, what am I supposed to talk about? People like to be educated. So they like to learn something, they like to be inspired, so maybe it's something motivating, and they like to be entertained. So think of things that you could post or go live about with those things, because everybody likes those things. Maybe it's funny, maybe you're cooking live, maybe you're showing them a recipe, maybe you're teaching them something, maybe you're talking about the personal development that you did today. Whatever it is, like for me this month, I'm reading, it has nothing to do with health and fitness. I'm reading a book called Unstuff Your Life to friggin' make me be organized because I'm the least organized person in the world. And I told people that I'm going to give them updates and what I learn as I go along. So my very first lesson was me, it was the first two chapters and I was supposed to hang my keys in a certain spot every day and find a hanger for my purse every day the same spot so i asked in my live video i asked people where do you hang your purse like where should i be hanging my purse something super simple it got crazy engagement and i even went live again to give them an update because i haven't found a hook for my purse yet so i'm not allowed to move on to chapter three like literally i am a disorganized mess and i'm just telling people like that's something i struggle with i freaking lose things all the time i was the person at a dance competition that never ever had the right costume stuff because i would forget it so that is one of my struggles and that is my project for the month and I'm sharing that as it go. So that's part of my value post. Um, I think be confident, influence, I talked about that. Clear pictures, guys, you, pictures need to be clear. Remove the clutter from the background. Like if my table can be a freaking disaster and I just shove everything over and I put my plate down and I take a picture literally like today I did a I pre-recorded a little booty workout in the living room there was like kids plates there there and don't get me wrong I do share that sometimes but this is one that I wanted people to share and I wanted it to to go somewhere I like chucked everything behind the camera so because I wanted it to be clean and I people I didn't want people to be distracted I wanted them to look at my exercises that I was giving them right um and then there are days where I'm like, guys, this is mom life. Look at my house. It's a, it's a disaster, right? Because it's relatable. Um, I think that's the end of my notes. So really, basically, guys, just be you, be real, go live. If you can't go live, post videos. I don't care what the videos are about, how you make your coffee, how you organize your pantry what you how you write out your grocery list like i'm i plan on going live this week to tell people it's the simplest thing when i write out my grocery list we do our meal plan i write out my grocery list and then i rewrite my grocery list so it goes in the order of the store produce first then i go to meat and then and i always rewrite my grocery list a second time 
so then I don't miss anything. That's a value post, but that's just me doing me, right? So if you treat your Facebook like a blog, like it's your life and you just kind of share everything, it will be easier. I hope that helps. Okay, so something that Lindsay didn't say, because I don't know that she gets it, that she does this. Um, the way that I would sum up her success on social media and the reason that what she's doing is working so very well is like just one thing stood out for me among all of these different tips, they were all tied together because every single one of them activates the law of reciprocity. Every single one of them is about giving as much value to the person as possible and it activates the law of reciprocity. Let me explain. So when she talked about, so she talked about making sure that your pictures are clear and pretty to look at. Why? Because when, some, when her follower is scrolling her Facebook, she doesn't want to waste her followers time with ugly, dark, blurry pics that like, that are just kind of like messing up their newsfeed, right? She wants them to have something pretty to look at. So she takes the time to do that. Sometimes she posts a pot, she posts a picture of her super messy house. Why? So that she's giving her followers something. Her follower is getting like, oh my gosh, I'm not a horrible mom I'm exactly the same her her follower is getting that connection when it comes to captions she takes the time to actually go and caption her videos which I know I need to do and I just have not done it yet um, I will I'm going to caption my videos why is she doing that because she wants it she wants to make it easier for her follower to look at her video she wants to make it like she will take the extra time to do that because she doesn't want her follower to have to take any extra time. So she's again giving value when it comes to affinity. So affinity where she's actually going and commenting and giving back like you know that whole you reap what you sow that's affinity. Basically it's the it's you reap what you sow. Are you going to give love and to like to actually um, add to other people's posts or are you just expecting everybody to comment on and like your posts, right? So that's again, adding value to other people. Um, when she posts recipes, when she posts food, she posts the whole entire recipe to make their life easier, to give a maximum amount of value. And that my friends is why her social media is and has been since the beginning as successful as it is because although she wasn't as good at it when she started right no. there was a learning curve and all of this stuff like the research that you do on social media and all of that like it's given you a lot of knowledge but I think what you knew at the very beginning was give away as much for free as I possibly can as much as I can give for free I'm going to give away for free because that way, like I said, that activates the, the law of reciprocity. It is a real thing. And you're just, you're being selfless. You're being very generous. You're being very selfless. And that's like all the tips that you gave are super practical. There's a lot that we can take and do. But I want you guys to understand that the idea behind it and the thought behind all of it is that she's giving away as much for free as she possibly can. She's caring more about what they're getting out of it than what it's costing her to do it. And when that happens, people feel that, right? They're getting value out of her page. And therefore, when they're ready to make a change, they want to give back to her, the one who's been giving them value all along. So Lindsay, you like, crushed this call. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Do you have time for a couple questions if anybody has? Yes. Oh yeah. And guys, I'm always thinking about posting. Like, I don't know if I'm at the grocery store and something happens, I'm like, Oh, that's a post. So I'll get out my phone and I will Siri, I'll push Siri and I'll write out the thought. Like I'll tell her what the say like, Siri, make a note for, and I'll say what the thoughts are in my head. And then she makes a note for it. So it's something I can go back to later. When I started as a new coach, 
I would lay in bed every night and like write, use my notepad on my phone and write out a couple of posts for the next day or ideas. I would literally think and be like, how can I give anything? Oh, I'll Google chia seeds and learn something new about them and then post about them. Literally, that's what I did as a new coach because I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just trying to help people, really. Um, exactly. Yeah. You're just trying to help people as much for free as you possibly can. That's like, that is what our page is for. Um, I was going to ask you a question. And now I can't remember. I'm just going back through. Okay. Um, yeah. And like I said, there's always going to be days that you have a brain fart and you're like, Oh, I just don't know. But you know what? Like you're your own boss and you need to show up anyway. Yeah. Um, if your boss gave you a deadline at work, I'm sure you'd do the job and get it done. Right. So, so there is a question down there from Lauren. If you just click love instead of comment, do you still do the same job? Lindsay? No, you comments are, do you mean if people just hit the love button? I think it's, I think it's for the affinity thing. Or yeah, for the affinity. Like if I just click that I like it or that I love the post, is that still have like the same reach and the same effect or I have to comment? I doubt it. Okay. I figured. I don't know the answer to that, but I'm sure Facebook would probably prefer if you actually commented. I do. It will start a relationship with the person anyway. I do know okay. the answer. No, it's not the same. And also you're not giving as much value on a like or a love on the post as you are if you're actually making a comment. And I know like Rosa says it too, like um, compliment and question or like, oh, what a, what a great picture. Where did you get that shirt? Right. And then you're starting a conversation with the person too. And you're commenting on their post. Compliment question is awesome. Um, I would caution you be authentic don't bullshit when it comes to the compliment question thing. If it's something that you're not interested in at all, like then why start that conversation? But there's so much on Facebook that you can offer a genuine compliment and ask a question about. Um, I am going to, I'm going to be adding this call to the Fit Republic um, new coach training sort of part two, um, where we'll, there will be a whole bunch of resources. Thank you, Lindsay. I so, so appreciate this. Um, 